呃，我们在开展这些新一的最新一的最先进的技术，比如手术技术之的同时，我们会把中医的康复手段来用上去。你比如，他在手术后，在呃一个多月以后，慢慢的我们就把中药的熏洗啊，呃像像这些方法就给他用在了他恢复上，减少局部的肿胀。Chinese doctors also routinely use acupuncture, believing it helps with pain management. Doctors are people of science, but something very unscientific happens when they treat athletes reaching for Olympic gold. Because they have gone through our treatment, so we have a very close relationship with them. We are not all doctors or athletes who are athletes. Like me, I am not a member of the team of athletes, but I have my own 病人在赛场上的话，我们很很关注这场比赛。我们可能会，呃，晚上，啊、呃，半夜或者是一两点钟，我们爬起来去看这场球赛，或者去看这个在国外举行的体操比赛。呃，我们治疗的这个国家队的运动员，有很多，有很多已经在国际的赛场上，就奥运会上已经获得了，重新获得了冠军。哎、呃，我想，那份奖牌里边。也有我们的可能一份成绩，我们也感到自豪。我们并不需要那个奖牌，但是我们为他取得的那个成绩，为他为国家取得的那块奖牌，我们感到自豪。If the doctors are emotionally invested in the athletes, the feeling is mutual. 嗯，是他们，然后让我重新回到赛嗯球场上的，嗯，肯定会，嗯，最起码没有什么报答，就是有成绩上的报答。Walking through the halls of the hospital, you can see the photos of other athletes indebted to their doctors. And in those photos, you also see the medical professionals who feel they have a personal stake in the Olympic Games. When you see some of my boys get the treatment in, in this institute and go back and win the, 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 the champion, gold medal, we are so excited. Yeah, because you see, this is our, you know, achievement, actually. Yeah, you can see how good they are. We are very proud of that. But if you, you, you regret to say something like uh, you cannot continue, then we feel very sad. We, just like the, all the emotion, just like the athletes and their coach, we are together. It means everything, the feeling and all the... We have uh, the same goal. We want to win, but sometimes it's impossible. But sometimes you, you did. When the 2008 Olympics hit Beijing, one thing is certain. Everyone at this hospital will be cheering for their former patients. <laughs> the 2008 Olympics aren't all fun and games. There's a lot of work behind the scenes, especially here at the Beijing Center for Disease Prevention and Control, or Beijing CDC. Behind these doors, some of China's best and brightest scientific minds are constantly figuring out how to keep the event safe for everyone. China developed the largest and one of the most high-tech epidemic monitoring systems in the world. It takes 207,000 CDC staff to operate the nationwide electronic network of emergency centers. This is the mass spectrometry lab, where food, air, and water are brought in from all over Beijing and tested on a daily basis. Tens of thousands of dollars of equipment are here to keep its visitors, the city itself, and of course the Olympic athletes safe from food poisoning, water contamination, and contagious diseases. The Beijing CDC was established in 2000 to promote healthy living, a new concept in China, and keep the public safe from disease and injury. Now, with the Olympics on the way, the pressure's on. The Beijing CDC began a risk assessment program in 2005, working with similar international agencies that have Olympic experience. Iowa State University and the Beijing CDC combined efforts to analyze all potential health risks in four main categories. Gastrointestinal, respiratory, disease carried by animals or insects, and sexually transmitted diseases. Next, the Beijing CDC collected and studied bacteria samples, identifying the most likely threats during the hot and humid Olympic month. In addition, 
Prevention efforts in Beijing include 12 labs for chickenpox, 16 for bird flu, 101 for HIV AIDS, and 6 for SARS. China was criticized for mishandling and covering up the 2003 SARS epidemic. The outbreak peaked in the spring with 2,500 reported cases in Beijing. Now every hospital in the city is required to file an online report for contagious diseases. The results are then sent to the Beijing CDC. The Beijing CDC also monitors pharmacies and hospitals for disease timing and frequency. Collecting and studying data are key prevention methods, but they're not the only ones underway. The city is making immunizations mandatory and free for everyone. Finally, addressing basic sanitation issues becomes even more crucial as Beijing's population grows. There's even an anti-spitting campaign. A foreign student offered this observation on the differences between what's accepted in the U.S. and China. Spitting in public is it's not really a big deal here. But with the Olympics on the way, it's becoming a bigger deal. If signs alone don't stop this long-standing habit and health hazard, the $7 fine might do the trick. That could mean several meals in China. So clearing your throat could mean clearing your wallet. But while preventing health problems altogether during the Olympics is the best case scenario, the Beijing CDC must prepare for the worst. The Beijing CDC has 11 emergency medical teams working with 18 teams from surrounding counties. By August of 2008, Beijing will have over 6,000 beds available for emergency patients who contract infectious diseases. Hosting a healthy Olympics is a tough job, but these folks are devoted to making sure everyone, from halfway down the block to halfway around the world, gets through in great shape. Being sick is never fun. But being sick far away from home in a foreign country is what every traveler dreads. If that happens to you in Beijing during the Olympics, don't call 911, call 120. This is the nerve center that receives all medical emergency calls in Beijing. What makes it different from the 911 dispatch service that we have in the U.S. is that a doctor answers your call and diagnoses your problem. Then that MD dispatches the correct specialist for your injuries or urgent care needs. Founded in 1983, the Beijing Emergency Medical Center began as a 100-bed trauma center, specializing in treating time-critical problems like stroke and heart disease. Back in May of 2005, the center stopped treating patients in-house. Instead, they channeled their resources into badly needed ambulance services for the rapidly growing city. These ambulances are equipped with state-of-the-art medical tools and a specialist versed in both Western and Eastern medicine. When you see a 120 ambulance racing through the streets of Beijing, you can be sure that it's less than 10 minutes away from the hospital best equipped to save its patient's life. To accommodate foreign visitors seeking treatment, multilingual operators are needed to translate for the diagnosing doctors. That's why the Beijing Emergency Medical Center is recruiting foreign language volunteers to help answer phones. During the games, to handle the million and a half visitors, the center will provide 140 ambulances to Olympic venues every day. They'll be equipped with touchscreen displays that will translate symptoms from one of nine languages into Chinese for the doctors in the ambulances. Why? Ilaubin 啊, 语言方面的保障, 通过语言方面的保障呢,